This is TomorrowPictures.tv. Hello and welcome to Episode 9 of A Voice for Animals. I am your host, Michael, and today I want to talk about smoking and the innocent lives it affects. Many smokers will say that it's their choice to smoke, and that others should respect that right and leave them alone. I think these people fail to realize that when they smoke, it affects not only their health, but those around them as well. Not only is smoking bad for the health of the smoker, causing, among other things, heart disease, cancer, stroke, it also has a traumatic effect on non-smokers that have to inhale the secondhand smoke or whatever lingers after the smoker is done. Secondhand smoke is a combination of the smoke from burning cigarette and the smoke exhaled by a smoker. Also known as environmental tobacco smoke, ETS, it can be recognized easily by its distinct odor. ETS contaminates the air and is retained in clothing, hair, curtains, and furniture. Many people find ETS unpleasant, annoying, and irritating to the eyes and nose. More importantly, it represents a dangerous health hazard. Over 4,000 different chemicals have been identified in ETS, and at least 43 of these chemicals cause cancer. Some of the worst ones are nicotine, a deadly poison, arsenic, used in rat poison, methane, a component of rocket fuel, ammonia, found in floor cleaner, cadmium, used in batteries, carbon monoxide, part of a car's exhaust, formaldehyde, cadmium, used to preserve body tissue, butane, lighter fluid, hydrogen cyanide, the poison used in gas chambers. Breathing in smoke from others' cigarettes can cause health problems in people who don't smoke. Secondhand smoke can cause lung cancer and heart Other problems. cigarettes, such as heart attacks can cause and health stroke, problems in, in people, people who don't, don't smoke. It could make children's asthma worse. It can cause pneumonia, ear infections, bronchitis. It could lead to lung it infections could make in children. Up to 15,000 children need hospital treatment each year because of breathing problems. Smoke's effect on children. Maternal, fetal, and placental blood flow change when pregnant women smoke, although the long-term health effects of these changes are not known. Some studies suggest that smoking during pregnancy causes birth defects such as cleft lip or palate. Smoking mothers produce less milk, and their babies have lower birth weights. Maternal smoking also is associated with neonatal death from sudden infant death syndrome, the major cause of death in infants between one month and one year old. Children's lungs and respiratory tracts. Exposure to ETS decreases lung efficiency and impairs lung function in children of all ages. It increases both the frequency and severity of childhood asthma. Secondhand smoke can aggravate sinusitis, rhinitis, cystic fibrosis, and chronic respiratory problems such as cough and postnasal drip. It also increases the number of children's colds and sore throats. In children under 2, ETS exposure increases the likelihood of bronchitis and pneumonia. In fact, a 1992 study by the Environmental Protection Agency says ETS causes 150,000 to 300,000 lower respiratory tract infections each year in infants and children under 18 months old. These illnesses result in as many as 15,000 hospitalizations. Children of parents who smoke half a pack a day or more are at nearly double the risk of hospitalization for respiratory illness. The ears. Exposure to ETS increases both the number of ear infections a child will experience and the duration of the illness. Inhaled smoke irritates the eustachian tube, which connects the back of the nose with the middle ear. This causes swelling and obstruction which interferes with pressure equalization in the middle ear, leading to pain, fluid, and infection. Ear infections and middle ear fluid are the most common cause of child's hearing loss. When they do not respond to medical treatment, the surgical insertion of tubes into the ear is often required. 
the brain. Children of mothers who smoke during pregnancy are more likely to suffer behavioral problems such as hyperactivity than children of non-smoking mothers. Modest impairment in school performance and intellectual achievement has also been demonstrated. Who's at risk? Although ETS is dangerous to everyone, fetuses, infants, and children are at more risk because it can damage developing organs such as the lungs and brain. We know how ETS harms the development of your child, but did you know that your risk of developing cancer from ETS is about a hundred times greater than from outdoor cancer-causing pollutants? Did you know that ETS causes more than 3,000 non-smokers to die of lung cancer each year? While these facts are alarming for everyone, you can stop your child's exposure to secondhand smoke right now. All the preceding information was in regards to direct smoking and harmful effects of secondhand smoke to humans. But there's lots of evidence that dogs, cats, and other animals are adversely affected by this as well. By ingesting cigarette and cigar butts, a puppy could die by ingesting two cigarette butts within a relatively short period of time. By drinking water, a puppy could die cigarette or cigarette butts with high concentrations of nicotine, by breathing secondhand smoke, by ingestion of nicotine replacement gum and patches, the health effects, breathing problems in dogs and asthmatic-like symptoms in cats, it can cause vomiting, cardiac abnormalities, respiratory difficulties and respiratory paralysis, feline lymphoma in cats, Cats exposed to secondhand smoke in the home have a higher rate of an oral cancer called squamous cell carcinoma, which may be due to the way cats groom themselves. When cats groom themselves, they eat the poisons from secondhand smoke that have settled on their fur. Cats exposed to secondhand smoke have a higher rate of feline lymphoma, a deadly form of cancer, than cats not exposed to secondhand smoke. Cats can develop respiratory problems lung inflammation, and asthma as a result of secondhand smoke. Dogs that inhale secondhand smoke are three times more likely to develop lung or nasal cancer than dogs living in smoke-free homes. Dogs can experience allergic reactions to secondhand smoke. Common symptoms of these allergic reactions are scratching, biting, or chewing of the skin. Owners often confuse these reactions with fleas or food allergies. Dogs can die from one to five cigarettes, and from one third to one cigar can be fatal if ingested. Birds. Birds can react badly to secondhand smoke and may develop eye problems as well as other respiratory problems like coughing and wheezing. Birds that sit on a smoker's hand can experience contact dermatitis from the nicotine that remains on the smoker's hand. This can cause them to pull out their feathers. So no matter what kind of animal you share your home with, secondhand smoke causes unnecessary diseases and death to innocent beings. Keep your pets safe by protecting them from secondhand smoke. Cigarette companies have hidden behind animal experiments for decades, trying to forget that everything we know about lung cancer and other smoking-related illnesses has come from human epidemiological and clinical studies, not from animal experiments. Even though U.S. federal law does not require that tobacco products be tested on animals, and even though smoking experiments on animals have been illegal in Britain since 1997, Thousands of animals are still kept in restraint, even though like smoking masks, experiments on animals body have holders, been illegal and are written. subject to horrific experiments every year. Examples of smoking experiments on animals include cutting holes in beagles' throats, through which the dogs are forced to breathe concentrated cigarette smoke for a year, inserting electrodes into dogs' penises to measure the effect of cigarette smoke on sexual performance strapping masks to the faces of rats and monkeys and permanently restraining them to force them to breathe cigarette smoke constantly, forcing dogs to be on mechanical ventilators and chronically exposed to cigarette smoke, and restraining rhesus monkeys in chairs with head devices and exposing them to nicotine and caffeine 
to determine how caffeine and nicotine affect breathing. I'm a non-smoker. Technically, I wouldn't be vegan if I was a smoker because all the experimentation they do on the animals to test tobacco products. I do my best to stay away from the hazards of smoking by staying away from people that smoke around me. This wasn't very easy as a child growing up. Several people in my immediate family are smokers and I truly believe that my allergies, my sinus infections, ear infections, and my three nasal polyp surgeries were directly related to the smoke that I was subjected to on a daily basis. I try to teach my friends and family about the pain they are causing those around them and hope that they can try to give up the filthy and deadly habit. Those who have less of a say are the children and animals. At a very early age, I have had the misfortune of having to watch a loved one slowly die very early in life from the effects of cigarette smoking. If I can make a plea to anyone who is listening who is a smoker, quit. Please, try. If you have tried in the past, try again. There are so many different options on the market now that one of them has to work for you. For yourself, for your loved ones, for the animals you share your home with, and for the thousands of animals that die every year in lab tests that are unnecessary. Please quit. Please check out my blog at avoiceforanimals.blogspot.com and if you'd like to email me, you can do so at avoiceforanimals at aol.com. Thanks for listening. This is tomorrowpictures.tv.